Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the respiratory system and its functions. The respiratory system is a biological system that is made up of organs and structures that are used for gas exchange in animals. Your respiratory system is the network of organs and tissues that help you breathe. This system helps your body absorb oxygen from the air so your organs can work. And it also cleans waste gases such as carbon dioxide from your blood. To understand the respiratory system better, we are going to perform a dissection with cow lungs to see how the respiratory system looks and works. Lab safety. For the dissection, it is necessary to wear a lab coat and gloves to protect yourself from the germs coming from the organs that you're going to be dissecting. Also, you will need a spacious setting in which you can move freely along with a table that is stable enough to perform the dissection. The tools that we are going to need to make the dissection are scissors and scalpel to make the incision. Materials needed for these dissections are a scalpel, scissors, lungs from a cow or from a pig, over lab coats and gloves. How do the lungs from the respiratory system give us the ability to breathe? Well, they do this through gas exchange. This process goes through four stages. In the first stage, bulk flow, usually propelled by muscular movements, carries the surrounding water or air relatively high in O2 and low in CO2 past a respiratory surface. In the second stage, O2 goes from the respiratory surface to the capillaries of the circulatory system, while CO2 goes from the circulatory system to the respiratory surface. In the third stage, bulk flow or blood transports gases between the respiratory system and the tissues. Blood is pumped throughout the whole body by the heart. And lastly, in the fourth stage, diffusion transfers O2 out of the capillaries into the nearby tissues and transfers CO2 from the tissues into capillaries. These are some organs from the respiratory system that we're going to present. We have the trachea, the esophagus, and the lungs. But why is this lung smaller? The left lung is smaller to leave space for the heart. So now we're going to talk about the trachea. The trachea extends from the larynx and branches into the two primary bronchi. The trachea is formed by a number of horseshoe-shaped rings joined together vertically by overlying ligaments. The trachea serves as a passage for air and moistens and warms it while it passes into the lungs and it protects the respiratory surface from accumulation of foreign particles. Wait, is the trachea this small? Oh no, this is just a part of it. The cow trachea is normally 12 to 14 inches long. The trachea is also surrounded by C-shaped rings of hyaline cartilage. There are typically 16 to 20 cartilaginous rings stacked along the length of the trachea. Their main function is to keep the airway from collapsing, which is important because you need to breathe. However, the rings only cover the frontal two-thirds of the trachea. Why? That's because the trachea needs to be flexible enough to accommodate food moving through the esophagus, which is located just behind it. Now we've got the bronchi holes here, as you can see. Uh, the bronchi is the two main air passages into which air flows from the trachea after being inhaled through the nose or mouth. Now let's talk about the bronchioles. If you cut the lung, you can actually see the bronchioles which are air passages inside the lung that branch off from the bronchi. The bronchioles deliver air to tiny sacs called alveoli where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged. Now here's an interesting fact. You can actually live with one lung. In most cases, one healthy lung should be able to deliver enough oxygen and remove enough carbon dioxide for your body to stay healthy. We are going to be presenting some of the organs that make up the respiratory system. Nasal cavity. The nasal cavity is the inside of your nose. Its function is to remove and trap pathogens and particulate matter from the inspired air. Pharynx. The pharynx or the throat serves both the respiratory and digestive system. By receiving air from the nasal cavity and air, food and water from the oral cavity. Larynx. The larynx is a structure that is composed of cartilage plates that are fastened together by membranes and muscle fibers for support. It serves to protect the lower airways and facilitates respiration and plays a key role in phonation. The pylorus. The pylorus is a lip-shaped flap of the cartilage located directly behind the tongue at the top of the larynx or voice box. The main function of the, of the epiglottis is to seal off the wine pipe during eating so the food is not accidentally inhaled. Esophagus. The esophagus is a hollow moon.
scalar tube that transports saliva, liquids, and food from the mouth of to the oral cavity. The oral cavity represents the first part of the digestive tube. Its primary function is to serve as the entrance of the alimentary tract and to initiate the digestive process by salivation and propulsion of the alimentary bolus into the pharynx. Alveoli. Each alveolus is cup-shaped with very thin walls, and each alveolus is surrounded by networks of blood vessels, which are called capillaries that also have thin walls. And finally, the last organ to show is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a thin skeletal muscle that sits at the base of the chest and separates the abdomen from the chest. It contracts and flattens when you inhale, creating a vacuum effect that pulls air into the lungs. When you exhale, the diaphragm relaxes and the air is pushed out of the lungs. The respiratory disease I am going to talk about is asthma. How does asthma affect the system and you? Asthma is a disease that affects your lungs, causing weightlessness, breathlessness, chest tightness, and cutting at night or early in the morning. The cause of asthma can be airborne allergens such as pollen, dust mites, mold spores, pet thunder, or particles of cockroach waste. Respiratory infections such as the common cold physical activity, or cold air. Preventions and treatment for asthma, one of them, is avoidance of environmental triggers and medically controlling clinical symptoms. The other one is a reduction of occupational and environmental exposures to allergens, irritants, and physical conditions known to worsen asthma symptoms. In conclusion, we can understand that the respiratory system is one of the most important systems in our body because it helps move carbon dioxide out of the body and moves oxygen into the body. And our organs need oxygen to work and function. And not only that, but the respiratory system actually has many other functions other than breathing and gas exchange. It actually also has the function of sense of smell as well as sound production. As we learned earlier about the larynx, it actually contains the vocal cords that you use for breathing, swallowing, and talking. So that is why the respiratory system is so important to the human body.